Alright, this is Mo Fusa that and today we're having a look at uh, the Transformer I bought from Anime Expo 2014 from Toy Arena. This is from Unique Toys. This is the A01 sound mixer and a third party uh, blaster. Looks pretty cool. So here's the back side of it. See, it looks really uh, G1 accurate. You can see in the photo up here, like a comic cover. It looks pretty, pretty cool. It shows the armor parts they've included. And down here is the armor that they made. Um, I don't think it has any significance. It just looks cool on him. And then here's the tape deck. Transforms into a rifle. So that's an interesting take on his tape tags that it turns into weapons. Um, I think initially the uh, ram horn was supposed to be included in it, but um, they said the design was wasn't working for them, and so they changed it to the tape deck rifle you see here. So down here you see it's a nice plastic card, thick. Uh, the front is another, the comic art, you see there, on the side you see his face, A1 sound mixer, unique toys, and back here you have his tech specs, which is cool, let's see it properly, and then here is an instructions, it's one page, big instructions, it basically tells you how you would get it to robot mode to tape mode and then the bottom shows you the transformation for the rifle too and how it goes into the tape deck so let's put this back since I've played with it for a little bit so I know how it works back here for a bit So it's a clamshell packaging, transparency you can see, the weapon you see, uh, blaster is already in the armor, tape deck, and the weapon he comes with. I don't know what it is exactly, but it looks kind of neat. Let's position him, Let's change the camera angle Just for a bit. Gun, tape deck. So, well, let's take a closer look at the armor though. So, here's the chest armor, the night vision goggles, and these things on the side, the shoulder armor, that kind of look like, kind of looks like speakers or like some kind of gestalt, like hand guard or something, like you would see in Predaking. Basically, this weapon would fit either hand, like that. His, his hands, actually. The, the, open up like that. It's a single joint, though, so all four fingers are fused together. So basically, he can grip any of his weapons. Let's go through articulation, though. Um... I'll leave the armor on for this because it doesn't really affect it as much. Basically the head can go 360 due to transformation. The arms can bend outward. There's a joint that allows for it right here. And then his arms can spin around 360 as a uh, elbow swivel with a screw. So you can so the basic arm move, move back and forth, and the hands don't move at the wrist due to the how they transform. It would have been nice, but no. Uh, the wrist, the waist can move. It has a click range. Uh, the thighs go up and down, side to side. 
the up and down is only limited by the front skirt and the back skirt but the side to side you can go full 90 degrees outwards and here's the thigh swivel here and then you can move the knee and you see the joint there cool and then for the foot the uh, tape deck handle comes part of the heel and since the foot extended out you can see there there's actually a nice foot swivel down there it goes out like that but it can't go in basically you put in a variety of poses so let's get this armor out so I can show you the tape deck basically all this armor is not plugged in it's a friction based armor so you can slip this on and off very easily if you can see there's a tab here I'm trying to get the light to catch it around here and on the other side here it basically plugs into the second line right here so it'll plug in and stay there until you take it off the chest armor is the same way put the arms up basically there's two there's a tab so it clips on to this part right here the little shallow point here you tabbed off you see there's the tabs here at the end where my th fingernail is hitting and since that's off it allows access to the chest panel just pulls off it's uh, transparent blue plastic it's painted in yellow silver and red and then you can fit in the tape deck the front it says a dash zero run one and it's blank on the other side so you can put this in here and plug it in here that goggles they're also friction based and it tabs in on the ears that shuts out so they, you can pull it off like that and there's slits in the goggles themselves so it fits securely around the head I'll show you how the tape deck transform. You can see the detail inside, it's very nice. And basically, all the rest of these, they don't transform into anything else. They're just armor parts for the robot mode, so I don't really need them for uh, the alt mode. So basically, for this, you pop this out and over, and then fold this part down so it becomes the end of the rifle and the rest becomes the scope this pops down and over so it becomes the barrel the end of the gun with the handle and then in the middle this part actually pops up to become the scope of the rifle and you can hold it in either hand In, and then it rests securely on it and so you can pose them very well it's long enough so if you try to fit it in it has a bit of an angle but it's long enough where you can you can just grab it and securely straight ish without it falling off the hand basically with the rifle you can pose them variety of poses and like you can, I also have it try to hold it with both hands while moving like that. But basically, <laughs> for the tape deck, it's a bit complicated. It takes a lot of steps, but it's straightforward like the G1 designs. So basically, I'll move this back and this back up so it give you more of an overhead view. So basically, what we first have to do is turn the head over. And down here, it's a port. Um, this reminds me of something in particular. I don't remember which part. Be careful when you put it in about the ears. They don't hit the, the back. 
and get scratched the silver paint. Reminds me of a toy that did this. No, it reminds me of the combiners that they released a couple years ago for the like uh, Huffer and Optimus and all that stuff. You turn the head and then on this part there'd be a big um, bigger head in there that'd be hidden inside the cavity. The same thing with Combiner Wars, the ones that turn into main bodies. But basically, it's a plug here and the hole in here and you plug it in. You might have to push it down a little bit to secure it, but it basically it tabs in there. And basically, when it's in tape deck mode, you can use this tab and now sticks out from here to open it up easily. Because everything in here is like friction based. Now onto the arms. Through the arms would be easier. Now I'll show you this side in detail. So basically, if you look from the side, the arm can actually takes off here and then the hand moves in like that and you swivel it so it matches up the same surface and with the joint you move it back and forward so it plugs or so it's uh, flat against and then for the hand you don't actually put it in all the way you put it in almost level to this but at an angle so it fits into the waist area then same thing for here do it so you swivel and then you push out and out so the hand sticks out move it in so it's flush or almost flush and then you push it out and in so then now the circular holes that was on the side of his arm is now facing out along with his shoulders and then you swivel the chest backwards from the waist so now it's like this and then you can choose this to do this at this point or at the end but you can also flip the chest the cod piece up so then you don't see any of the detail from the skirt and so be more flush although it reveals more of the thighs that way and that's yeah. then via this if you look at the gray joints here you see there's space in between here and here and then you push it in so now the gray joint is flush against the surface and now everything is as straight as possible so you take this push it in so it's everything is flush you try to get everything as straight in as possible and you see how the hands stick out a little bit flush that's good so now for these you take it out a little bit so you have room to work with and then you basically turn these around again so the speakers are facing out here and then these side panels that you can see on the inside of the legs are now pointing outwards and that will help with the transformation so basically you can jet it out like this and then you can see how it connects but I'll put it halfway through so you can see how it connects so this can do it in any steps for the legs at this point but I like to push the feet in a bit and move it in so now it's flush makes a good sound and then I take this which become the handle and move it halfway up so it's out of the way and then for the panel on the side put it out again and then there's another panel on the inside here that will cover up the rest of the waist. So then I like to just push it out all the way so it's easy to grab onto. Then pull from the side and pull out. And then it's the same thing on the other side. Pull out. So basically 
when you have it fully transformed, it would look like this. It would be flush against it. So let's do that. Yeah. Oh, right. Also, on here, since this panel is now out, you can also swivel this. So when you have this like that, you swivel it out so it meets up with the rest of the body. So basically, you swivel out to the sides like that. Because this thing can swivel either way. You need the but it's connected to the ball joint here so you need to keep it like this so then you can point out stuff so like that and twist the stuff I like to have it where the thighs the back of the thighs are facing into it so when you see it from the bottom there's no uh, screw sticking out and then this all around and so basically you can already see how it plugs in from here here these are the only things that actually tab in together because basically for the rest of it there's only like a divot in here so it will face flush with the shoulder joint and so this is most easily the hardest part of the transformation trying to get these two plugs in because these are perfectly rectangular and so are these ports and you have to keep everything squeezed together so you can put it in. It's very annoying but after a few tries um, the edges here get a bit rounded so then they aren't as hard. I usually start from the left side because it gives me a bit more easy to prod it in. So basically this is how that side can look in. It covers the rest of the thigh and half of the waist while the other side will also plugged in. You know this side usually gives me trouble but after a couple of transformations it will get used to getting pulled that way. And so you press against it to make sure everything is flush with each other and now for the handle you just pull the black pieces out which will become the grip and then you push these all out so I like to do it halfway because then it makes it easier for these two pieces to plug in together so I start from the left side and then when I do the right side it automatically tries the hooks up with it I keep in that formation and I plug it all in. You can see basically here they're not really flush with each other so you also have to tab in and force some pressure from both sides in order for it to properly join together. Then everything, if it stays together properly, is friction tabbed in. So if you falls, it won't break apart on you but still stays in there. So for a closer look. So this is basically what it looks like. Um, also when you put the barrel back in, when you do it you also have to push this in at an angle so then this edge doesn't hit here and stops it from going in because then it will cause like scraping against. Put both of these at an angle and then pop it in so it uh, avoids that. Basically it's a nice tape deck and you put in any tapes from Unique Toys and plug it in like that. So basically the detail on here is nice. Um, I wish there was actually more paint apps on it. It's very minimal on that. Besides the silver and the red apps, um, I wish they put in more paint so it breaks up kind of the monopoly for the red and silver. 
um, because in the actual toy, there's a lot of details, like on the panels and on the sides. So you can play it fast forward, the volume as well. And this side, um, since it's basically the same parts, it basically copies it too. So there's two we volume wheels, fast forward, reverse, stop, play. So basically they moved it off from the front and put it to the side, which is an interesting choice. The speakers are in the middle. Um, so besides the lack of paint, which I think is... It's a good toy by itself. And uh, the common problem or complaint is that if you look closely, you can see that the panels from the hands don't actually sit in flush. They sink in a bit, and then the chest starts out from there. I wish it'd be more straight, but that's fine. The only major complaint is the back. As you see, because it's the back, there's very little paint apps besides the back of the chest and the thighs. And the common complaint is that even though this points up, if you look from the top or the side, it doesn't sit flush with anything, so it just sticks out very awkwardly, and you can tell how it's uh, transformed. But more common is that all these joints are exposed. There's no panels like on the front to hide them at all. Uh, a lot of people would like if these weren't exposed, and I'm one of them, honestly. I could handle just the thighs sticking up in the front because I can get why they couldn't engineer something for that. But since these are also the um, out inside of the legs, they can put another panel in here lower from where they put the front of it and then it can flip down and out to cover the rest of it. Like this part could still be there because you can't really have a panel that folds out to hide all of that but you could at least hide up to this much and that's one of the main problems but honestly overall this is an actually good representation of Blaster if you want a modern update to the, to the uh, aesthetics but still have that G1 quality to him so I would really recommend it. His only down points is the lower back of the alternate mode and the very little function of the armor besides Robo. There's no real point to it. But other than that, it's a good toy. I highly recommend it. Um, this is MoFo to that and tune in for the rest of the playlist, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.